Last week, Moderna asked the FDA to authorize its vaccine for children under the age of six. The company's chief medical officer, Dr. Paul Burton, joins us now from Princeton, New Jersey. Doctor, welcome to Face the Nation. Thank you, Margaret. Good morning. Well, uh, the FDA said Friday it will not delay one vaccine to wait for the other. In other words, they're not trying to put Pfizer and Moderna head to head here necessarily. Each application will be considered when the data is ready. So are you confident that Moderna will be ready for the FDA to review your vaccine at their June meeting? Yes, absolutely, Margaret. So we submitted our data last week. Uh, I think the FDA now have you know, all of the core fundamental data they need to be able to begin that application uh, review. So yes, we're, we're very confident. You've begun it, but you won't have all of it in until May 9th, I had read. You're, you're committed to that date? Yes, absolutely. So the data are in, you know, the study has been completed. We have the data. Now, typically what we then do is to package the data uh, electronically, supply it to the FDA so, of course, they can uh, conduct their own reviews, their own analyses of the data. That's what will go in by May 9th, but they have the data that they need now to begin. Okay. So, I mean, full disclosure, I have children in this age group. So as a parent, I'm very interested in, in the explanations you have for how this vaccine will work. According to the Moderna release, the vaccine is 37% effective in kids two to five, roughly 50% in those six months to two years. What is your confidence level in that performance? Yes. So first of all, on, on safety, and we can talk about that, uh, the safety profile we see with this vaccine in these very youngest kids was very reassuring. Uh, actual rates of uh, safety events even lower than we see in the six-year-old to 12-year-old, so that's great. But let's think about that number, Margaret, 37, 51% vaccine effectiveness. What does that really mean? It's a vaccine effectiveness against symptomatic disease, symptomatic COVID disease, about 10 weeks after the second dose of vaccine. So what it means for parents, for caregivers, is that if they give the Moderna vaccine to these little kids, they would basically cut in half the risk of that child getting symptomatic COVID. Now the number 50% I know is, is often lower than we are used to seeing with our, our vaccine, but it's because this study was conducted during a time of Omicron. Right. When we look at the UK data that was released just last week, when we look at symptomatic disease, exactly there we see vaccine effectiveness of about 50 percent but when we look at vaccine effectiveness against hospitalization that number is 89 to 95 percent so that's why i think we can be very reassured and very confident in this result well that 50 percent benchmark set by the fda is key because that's usually you know the floor they have for for approval um but when you look at the data it, you're doing a vaccine that's 25 micrograms, as I understand it, in size. It's a, it's a higher dose than Pfizer's vaccine, which was three micrograms. It's still being reviewed. Um, what are the side effects for a toddler of a dose that size? Yes. So we give uh, two 25 microgram uh, shots a month apart. And uh, when we looked at the safety, as I say, safety profile was very reassuring. Lower events of safety in this very young age group, even compared to the, the six to 12 year olds. Common side effects of injection site pain and some fever. Really a lot of what all of us have after, after a vaccination. But again, reassuringly, when we look at the rates of very high fever, so fever over 104 degrees Fahrenheit, only 0.2% of these little kids uh, experience that. And typically in this age range for other approved vaccines, we would see rates of maybe 1%. So I think overall, very reassuring. You mentioned safety and I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because I know your application for the vaccine for that age group, uh, six to 11, 12, 17, that's been pending for the FDA since June of 2021. So why do you feel comfortable putting your vaccine in my three-year-old or someone's four-year-old if the FDA hasn't approved it to be put in the body of a 12-year-old? Yeah, well, so look, now we've uh, submitted additional safety data to the FDA for the 12 to 18 year olds. 
Uh, we've also just submitted our application for the 6 to 12 year olds as well and now we have the data on the very youngest kids. So do you expect We're the FDA to approve it for those older age groups? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Yes, I mean those applications are now under active review by FDA, so they have the full spectrum of data with us. And we are of course approved for over, over six year olds uh, in many other countries around the world where it's being used safely and effectively to provide protection for those young kids. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that the FDA will follow, follow suit here across that full age range. So I guess the fundamental question here is when we talk about that benchmark of 50 percent is is putting a vaccine in the in the smallest of children who don't have any protection, right? They're too young to even wear a mask, many of them. Is just getting some protection worth it? Um, or does it need to meet that standard 50% benchmark the FDA sets? Yes, yeah, so the 50% benchmark, you know, really was in a pre-Omicron era. As I say, we know now that 50% means to cut in half your risk of symptomatic disease. I think from the antibody levels that we also saw in this study, we can expect high protection against the important thing, which is hospitalization, even death. Omicron is not a mild disease. In kids, we see data from Hong Kong, the rates of admission of kids to pediatric intensive care units very high. So what I think we can reassure parents, caregivers here, is that if approved, this vaccine should be able to safely and effectively protect your kids, your youngest kids, against severe disease, hospitalization. That's what counts. And for uh, adults, when do you expect a rebooted version of the vaccine to be uh, available, a, a booster shot that would work against Omicron, for example? Yes. So look, even Spike Vax, which we have now, the Moderna vaccine, does provide protection, certainly against severe disease, hospitalization. People are eligible now to get boosted. I would absolutely recommend it. We're still in this BA2 wave, uh, other variants sweeping now throughout the United States. We announced a couple of weeks ago a new variant specific booster that we've been tested and we have an additional candidate, our lead candidate in testing now that I believe is going to be even more superior. So Margaret, we are confident that by the fall of this year we should have large amounts of that new booster vaccine that will protect against Omicron and other variants and really protect uh, Americans and people around the world as we go into fall of 2022. Doctor, thank you very much and we'll be watching closely what happens next.